here with all of you tonight. I've been at Equal Voice events in the past, and uh, this one tops them all. So thank you so very much. And I'm really glad that, uh, that Lisa opened by saying that this is a night to celebrate, because that's exactly how I open my speech, is by saying that this is a night to celebrate. We are making great strides, women. Never has there been a time in history when women are, have been moving forward at the pace that we are moving. No, the race isn't won. Many more women and girls need assistance and opportunity. However, we are a growing force and there is much room for optimism. Let's take stock. Less than 100 years ago in Canada, women didn't have the right to vote. Where are we today? In the House of Commons, we have 76 women, and let's not forget that we have 40% women in our Senate. Our women MPs represent professions of business women, teachers, nurses, doctors, police, accountants, lawyers, and chemists. Where Lisa is, I don't know, but she's the chemist. But that's just to name a few. And in the Senate, we have a woman who is a former judge and a diplomat, and we have another woman who was previously dean of her university before she was, or before she was appointed to the Senate. Our women are well-educated. They are accomplished, competent women. They've proved their merit in nomination contests and in elections. We should celebrate these accomplishments. Across Canada, we currently have six female premiers women leading provinces with the largest populations. I'd say we're making strides. Globally, there are plenty of examples for us to applaud. Margaret Thatcher, who was the first prime minister, female prime minister in Great Britain, the only one they've had. Angela Merkel, Chancellor of Germany. Aung San Suu Kyi, who is leading Burma to democracy. And most recently, South Korea, who just elected their very first female president. I was recently in Malawi, and I had in East Africa, and I had the opportunity to spend an hour with President Joyce Banda, who is new to the position of president in Malawi, but she is implementing economic reforms there that are going to move Malawi forward quickly. So do we have reason to celebrate? Yes. And is there more to do? Yes, too many girls in emerging economies do not have access to education, and that is the greatest barrier to achievement. Too many girls are married at puberty, and like Mita, who I met when I was in Bangladesh, pregnant with her sixth child at the age of 22, the future is bleak. Too many women have no access to credit to grow their enterprises. But to combat these issues, Canadian Development Aid has made women and girls a cross-cutting theme in all of our development projects. In Afghanistan, we are ensuring that our school projects have included separate washroom facilities for girls. The issue that so often precludes girls from going to school and ensures that they will be put into an early marriage. L'Initiative Pakistan Canada de conversion de dette investment dans le secteur de l'éducation vise à convertir les prêts d'aide au Pakistan en pays en investissement dans le secteur national de l'éducation. Plus de 7 millions d'enfants étudient aux écoles et 60 personnes sont des filles. We are supporting microfinance projects because when women are able to support their families, health, education, and nutrition are their top priorities. Is there more to be done? Absolutely. Are there more of us who can mentor young girls to help them change the world? Absolutely. But do we have reason to celebrate? Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, uh, Lois, and I think certainly as we think about International Women's Day and reflect on our Canadian context, it is always important to uh, recognize that there are uh, women that continue to fight the good fight all over the world, and we can learn a lot from them. And now, 